The graphic views of parts in fritzing require a different drawing for each view. There's PCB, schematic, and breadboard. And if you look at the complexity of this mega, you can see there's a lot of graphics involved in the breadboard view. In fact, making a part in fritzing is 90% learning a vector graphics editor and 10% following a few fritzing rules for the part to be accepted. And the main vector program that we use for fritzing at the moment is Inkscape because it's free and open source. Let's briefly look at Inkscape to familiarize yourself with the tools you'll be using as this next part will mainly be a tutorial on how to draw with Inkscape. Inkscape is very powerful, meaning it has a lot of features and that can make it seem a bit complicated. So we'll only cover the essentials first. First thing you need to do is find Document Properties. Go to File and Document Properties. The display unit sets globally the units you'll be using in most boxes. Down here is a resize page to contents. When you draw nodes and elements on a drawing, you'll go Select All and resizing the page to the contents will shrink this page down to a tight fit on those elements. Next in the tabs, Grids. Here in Grids we press New to make a new grid. The grid is used to snap parts to junction points. We have X and Y spacing and origin XY. As an example, we will change Y spacing to 5 X spacing to 10 and we will offset the X origin by 5. Notice now the grid is 5 millimeters away from the origin. We can now go to new again and put a grid on a grid and press remove to remove grids. We will now close this and open XML editor. XML editor is so essential it should be open all the time. Just go to edit XML editor. There is another way to open it from the toolbar with this icon here. We will just move it for the time being. The next dialog box you want to open all the time is fill and stroke. Go to object, fill and stroke. Next, open the Transform box. Then, Object, Transform. You'll be using these so often you'll be leaving them open all the time. Most of the objects you'll be drawing for fritzing are rectangles, circles and lines. And if you come to the sidebar here, they are on here. This is the rectangle, circle, lines. You will also use the text on occasions. Now we'll draw a rectangle. Press plus to zoom in. So we can get close to the origin of 0, 0. Now select the square in the side toolbar. Click on the screen and drag and release. With Inkscape you draw an object and modify it after. So we come now to the stroke and fill. If we click the solid box, it will fill the rectangle. Down the bottom are standard colors. To give it a color, just click on one of them. Next, we go to the stroke paint. We can adjust the colors here, or we can adjust the stroke color by holding the shift key down and selecting another one of the main colors. Stroke style can adjust the width. We will give this a one millimeter width stroke. To adjust its size, with the arrow key selected, these arrows will appear if you click on it. Just drag an arrow and it changes size. Even though you can change sizes this way, it's not as accurate as using the toolbar at the top. This is the location of it and this is the size of it. We can change parameters very accurately with this toolbar at the top. First we'll unlock it and change the rectangles 
sides independently. Here we'll change it to 40 millimeters by 30. Now to move it, we just have to click on it and drag it. But to be more accurate, we can use the XY coordinates. Notice that this is 0, 0. We will now change this to 0, 0. And it moves precisely. Now we'll make a circle. Click on the circle. Click on your drawing. Hold down Control and Alt and drag it to the side. And release. Again, we can change its colors by going to Fill. Select Solid Square. Change the color to red. Go to Stroke Paint. And watch as I hold the Shift key down and select one of the bottom colors. And click. Next we can change the width. 5 millimeters. And again we can change the things with the toolbar at the top. Here we wanted to keep it a circle so we lock the width and the height. So when we change one we change both. Again we can move its location. for accuracy. To draw a line we click on the pencil. Click on a point on the screen and a red line will appear. Hold the control down and it will snap in certain angles. Click and the line appears. Again we can change its width here and because it's stroke we have to hold the shift down and pick a color. And again we can move it with its coordinates by selecting the arrow key again. You'll notice it has round ends. If you come back to the stroke style you can make square ends or whatever's here. Now we'll see what the resize page does. First we'll select this and move it here. Next we'll go to File, Document Properties, Edit, Select All. Now we'll go Resize Page to Drawing. Notice how everything is tightly packed around the objects. And now this is point zero zero. Just click off screen and select an object. And now it's now location is there relative to this point. Now we'll look at the XML editor in relation to these objects and nodes. Notice we have three objects here, rectangle, path and path. Click on the rectangle and it selects the rectangle, path and path. This is an easy way to select nodes when there's a lot of nodes on top of each other as it's very hard to select them on the actual drawing. You can pretty much draw most electrical parts with your rectangle, circle and line and I've pretty much shown you all the major tools that are needed to achieve this. Again this is a very minimalistic basic drawing tutorial so go online to expand your knowledge.